Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we are doing another story video, but it is not about a big bass. Dozens of you have been asking about the story of this fish that is sitting on my desk. What's the deal with that trout? So today I'm gonna to tell you the story of this fish. Uh, there's a reason these two fish sit on my desk. You guys already know the story of my 17 pound largemouth. Uh, my biggest bass, it's my personal best. It's what set me on the course to do tactical bass. And this trout here is equally special to me. This is actually a brook trout, seven pound, four ounce brook trout. Normally when you see giant brook trout, they're in full spawning colors. The reason that we didn't do that is that I didn't catch this fish during the spawn. This fish wasn't all lit up and beautiful. She looked exactly like this when I caught this fish. A little bit of information is sitting right here. Fish is seven pounds, four ounces. Caught October 22nd, 1994. It's been a little while since I caught that fish right there. <laughs> I was 10 years old when I caught this brookie. Uh, you know, a two, three, four pound brook trout is an incredible fish. They are so pretty. A seven pounder is, you know, almost a non-existent fish. A state record in California is in the nines. Uh, a seven is up there. I was 10 years old. And it's, it's not some story of me being an amazing fisherman. Uh, this fish, we were at Cherry Lake. And I was with my parents, of course, I was 10 years old. Uh, and the long and short of it is that we were walking the bank trout fishing. And the water there is really clear. There were a lot of people fishing. There were a ton of people up there. Uh, I remember it like it was yesterday because this was such an important fish and completely changed my direction. And I'll get to that at the end. Uh, but this fish, I was walking the shoreline throwing a rooster tail. I was throwing a bright green rooster tail. Uh, and I saw these two fish cruising. And I threw out ahead of them, and the smaller one came out and ate that rooster tail, and I ended up breaking it off. And in hindsight, that brookie was probably three, three and a half pounds. It was a big brook trout. Broke it off. You know, I'm a little kid. It's uh, whatever. I was, I was mad. I remember I had to walk so far back to my dad to get another rooster tail. And I don't know how much of my day was lost in this whole process. I mean, I was a long ways from my parents. I probably had to walk 10 or 15 minutes each way and get another bait. And then I fished all the way back down the shoreline again, no bites. I got back down and I was throwing this bait at that time, a black rooster tail. And I uh, was walking along and in that clear water, I saw the fish that I had just broken off. The rooster tail is hooked in the corner and I could see it clear as day. It was like a lime chartreuse, like bright green rooster tail stuck right here on the side of that fish's face. And in my little kid brain, I, I was like, well, maybe I can get that fish to bite again and I can get my rooster tail back. And when I saw it, it was cruising with a second fish, this fish. I'd love to tell you that I saw this giant brookie swimming, but I was a 10 year old kid. I saw this brookie swimming and I didn't have some grand visions of catching it. I had a grand vision of getting the three pounder that was with it to bite again so I could get my rooster tail back. So I fired out ahead of those fish. And at 10 years old, I, I had already spent a long time trout fishing. You guys don't know, uh, but I grew up up in the mountains, lived in and around Yosemite, um, got to go to a one room school for part of my childhood, uh, had a river flowing through our backyard. I trout fished literally every day. Uh, so even at 10 years old, I could lead a fish. So I'd fired out ahead of these fish and I was hoping that the small one would shoot off and eat it and I could get my rooster tail back. And instead, as the small one was coming along, the big one came right out from behind it and came across and ate that bait. And uh, what a fight. You wanna talk about lucky to land a fish I had a locked drag, but I was throwing, when I was a little kid, all we ever fished with was Maxima. And you guys know I still use Maxima as a leader line today. Uh, but when I was a little kid, I was fishing straight 12 pound Maxima Ultra Green. That's what I had on that rod. And a locked down drag. 
wasn't planning on catching a giant fish. Somehow, some way, uh, you know, I had enough stretch in that mono that even with a lock drag, this fish didn't break off and didn't bend out. I don't know how. Uh, but I battled this fish for a long time, finally landed it, and then my folks weren't there. My folks were still way down the shoreline. And I'll never forget that walk all the way back down. Uh, my dad met me part way. There was a, a lot of commotion from the other people on the bank who saw what happened, saw the size of the fish. Uh, my dad met me part way, and I remember I kept begging him to carry it for me. And uh, he's like, you caught it, you're carrying it. And I remember it was so heavy. I'm like, Dad, it's so heavy, please help. But he made me carry it all the way back. And then ultimately we got a skin mount of that fish. And, you know, it's... Obviously, this is a skin mount. I did not release that fish. I was a 10 year old kid, didn't know the difference, didn't know what catch and release was. Knew we had a giant trout, we took it home with us. Uh, at the time, because the colors on it were so dark, we didn't even realize it was a brook right away. I thought it was a big brown. It was after the fact we realized what I even had. But the importance of this fish and the reason that this fish is on my desk today is that up until this point, like I said, I grew up in the mountains uh, for a lot of my childhood and fished every single day and I would just catch whatever I could catch. And that might be catching native fish, that might be catching the little rainbows that they dumped in the creek. Uh, you know, in the summertime, they'd come down once a week and plant, we'd go catch those fish. But I always fished for numbers of fish. I just wanted to catch fish. And I remember having a conversation with my dad after I caught this trout clear as day i remember telling him i didn't want to catch little fish anymore i wanted to catch the big ones and that became a thing it stuck so it didn't it didn't immediately translate to bass uh, we stayed trout fishing a long time we still bass fished but we had to drive out of the mountains to bass fish my my home waters it was all trout water and everywhere we would go I was no longer trying to catch a bunch of fish. And I'm sure that was frustrating for the adults that I was with. Because you know, you take a little kid fish and you want to go out and catch them. And I was not interested. Anywhere we went, it didn't matter if we were fishing for rainbows or browns or brooks or goldens or whatever we might be fishing for. Uh, I wanted to catch a big one. And I would do whatever I thought it took to catch a big one. I would fish long hours and throw different baits and I would modify baits and we, we used to have a bunch of tubes that, that we had our own name for that we would rig up differently with a treble hook instead of a jig hook and all this stuff just to try and catch bigger trout everywhere we went uh, but that became a passion and then uh, we ultimately moved back down to the valley and got much heavier into bass fishing and it carried right over and then you guys know the story from there uh, when I decided to start throwing swim baits, uh, that it went for years without a bite. And then ultimately translated into that 17 pounder right there. So these two fish together are extremely important to me. This at 10 years old is when I made the transition from just fishing to wanting to do something different. And that fish right there is when I made the transition from wanting to catch big fish, from being fascinated by fi big fish, to wanting to spend my life fishing and teaching and pursuing giant fish and helping other people do the same thing and ultimately growing into where we are today with tactical. Uh, it was a combination, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of catches before and after and in between but these two fish, if I could pull two fish out of my entire life, were the two that got, got us where we are right now, that brought me to this point. Um, and that's why they sit here, both ends of the desk, uh, and I see them every day when I'm in here working. Uh, that's special to me. You know, fishing is important. It's not just getting out there on the water. It is. It, it is that. It's getting out there. It's relaxing. It's having fun. It's camaraderie. It's all those things. But it's more than that. Uh, and especially for Tim and I, as tactical has grown uh, and as we've had kids, this has gone from 
something that each of us did as children because we didn't know each other as children. Our, our stories are very separate until, until we come together. Tim had a totally different childhood, but also fishing. Uh, but now it's culminated where it's us teaching our families, um, but it's also the family that has grown with tactical. You know, you guys are a huge part of that, the, the greater tactical family trying to teach everybody that passion and that desire to catch more and bigger fish. And that we look forward to years and years and years from now watching you guys continue to pay that forward and just watch this thing grow and snowball. So wanted to share that catch with you. A bunch of you have asked about it. That is a seven pound, four ounce brook trout. And now you know why it sits here on my desk. Appreciate you guys. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon.